I'll start with a, a little demo of, of our data acquisition system called the lab streaming layer. Um, and s this system is open source. It's uh, on the web. It's, um, you find it when you Google for lab streaming layer. It's at Google Code, code.google.com slash p slash lab streaming layer. And what this basically is is a, uh, a technology that allows you to exchange time series between devices like EEG or um, motion capture or various other kinds of things and programs and also between computers. And so it's a, a rather flexible system to get uh, time series access in real time or to record things from various devices and so on. Um, I'll just quickly sh give you a sketch of what it basically is and, and sort of how it works. And then I'll show you a little bit of a demo. So this is all open source. You just can get it from the web to tinker with various devices in, in your language. At the bottom of the whole stack is a protocol, um, the LSL protocol. It goes over the network. And on top of that is a little library. The library is called libLSL, um, cross-platform and so on. And this library is what really d does all the talking um, between machines and, and between programs. There's wrappers on top of that uh, for various languages, C++, Python, MATLAB, Java, and so on. So you can use the same system from all these languages. And that's, of course, important if you want to hack things together. Uh, you know, say, if it's C++ stimulus presentation and a Python-based data number crunching and a Java-based database client or something like that. So on top of these core components of LSL, there's, there's a distribution that you can download, which comes with extra apps that form some sort of little ecosystem. There's acquisition programs for various modalities, including EEG, eye tracking, human interface devices, motion capture, and multimedia, things like audio and video. There's a few generic utilities, like a recording program to record it all into one file, uh, viewer, and so on. There's then also example programs in all sorts of languages and, and, of course, a good documentation on how everything works. If you have any hardware that is on this uh, screen, there's a good chance that it works uh, for you with LSL. So for EEG, there is a bunch of brands that, that are supported, like Biosemi, Cognionics, Mindo, EGI. Uh, there is a few more that are not yet tested, but they probably work, such as ABM's B-Alert, Enobio, Neuroscan Synamp, there's a few eye trackers that work, such as the SR, iLink, uh, Toby Tracker, IVX, and so on. Motion capture systems, usually people don't have these because they're rather expensive, like FaceBase and OptiTrack. But something cheap like a Kinect would work. Um, there's human interface devices, like all sorts of game controllers, joysticks, the Wiimote, the Guitar Hero 3 controller, and whatever. <laughs> and then uh, multimedia devices, like your sound card. Most of these things currently require that the device is plugged into a Windows machine, because in many cases, there's only Windows drivers. But you can grab the data also from a Mac or from Linux if you want to. And I'll just, just quickly show you what it basically boils down to. So if you write a script where you um, want to provide a time series to LSL so that other programs can read your time series, kind of subscribe to it. You usually just write a few lines. And here's a MATLAB example, you know. Declare a stream. It's virus ME, EG, 8 channels, 100 hertz, floating point numbers. You make a so-called outlet. And the outlet is the thing that you push your data through. And here's a little infinite loop which um, pushes one sample, which is a multi-channel vector of random numbers into the outlet. So a little demo. The same thing also works in Python. Here's a, here's a snapshot of Python and in C++. And you see it basically looks the same in all these languages. Uh, so you know the basic principles are identical. And reading data is, is also relatively simple. So here's a MATLAB example. It fundamentally starts with discovering a stream on the network. You don't use IP addresses or things like that. Um, you just say, give me an EEG stream, and then you wait until someone shows up You know, an EEG stream. So this is a content-based query. So you say, find a stream that has type EEG. You can also search by name. 
So just give me the, um, the bio semi stream or so, or various other things. And once you have one, you open an inlet, and then you pull out your samples. You can also pull out chunks and, and things like that. And you can switch between samples and chunks if you want to. So uh, sort of the 10,000 feet view is you have the network. You can have multiple computers. And you have different programs, like your data acquisition program, stimulus presentation program, other devices. And each program uses this library to send the data out or to pull the data in. And you can have as many readers of one stream as you want, um, and so on. You can view it and record it and process it at the same time, for example. And we are, in this lecture, of course, mostly concerned with online processing. And so this applies to you if you want to just hack without any toolbox and just want to do everything yourself, like the number crunching and so on, and but still want to be able to have access to all these devices. And it applies if you're using BCI Lab, because BCI Lab primarily uses uh, LSL to get its data in. And so I switched to the, uh, you know, quote, hands-on section. I just the type in lab streaming layer here from Google Code. So you get to this website. There's the wiki, um, which really contains a lot of stuff, you know. Most importantly, something on network connectivity. So if something doesn't work, it's usually your Windows firewall or your personal firewall, whatever. And there's a bunch of instructions on how to, to and allow your program to deal with that. Um, on a single computer, you usually don't have any issue whatsoever. Uh, and then per, for each device, like say the Mindo, there's little help of how to use that. If you want to get it, you go to Downloads and just grab the biggest package here. In this case, it's Lab Streaming Layer 130. There's all smaller releases. And once you've downloaded it, you get a directory and extracted it. You get a directory like this here. Uh, so font size isn't great, but there's an apps directory that contains all the applications and an LSL directory that contains the actual library if you want to do some hacking uh, yourself. So under apps, you find all the different acquisition devices that are supported, say, for example, audio. I just click on the audio capture. It gives me a button that says link. I click it, and now the audio stream of my laptop is linked to the, um, to the lab streaming layer. And I can go on and say, OK, I also want the mouse, you know, computer mouse. I'm going to link that as well. And then there are some programs which have configuration options. Um, these are usually more complicated ones, like say, BioSemi. I don't have a BioSemi amp here, but you see, you know, sometimes there's stuff that you can select, like I want to resample, and then you click link. Uh, usually they also have configuration files, but I'm not going to dive into those details. And I'll do one more thing here. So say I have a Wii mode or so, um, uh, just as an example. So obviously um, that generalizes to EEG, but I just use that. Um, to show you some signals, um, I'll add this thing as a Bluetooth device. Should be relatively quick. So, and then I can start the Wii Mode application. Uh, so now I have a Wii Mode stream. So now I should have something like three or so streams on the network. And now I can, uh, for example, start and record all that. Uh, to do an experiment. You always want to record things, of course, so that later on you can replicate your results. The recording program called Lab Recorder is also in this apps directory. And it's written in Python, which means you have to install a few things um, before you can use it. Namely, you have to install Python and so on. Um, and there's a readme for that in the Lab Recorder directory, which you should read, definitely. It says which package to install and how to install that. Otherwise, you're not going to get this to work. But it's, it's very short, as you saw. So uh, anyway, so the recording program always shows you every stream that's visible, like your mouse buttons, Wii mode, audio capture. You can unselect some. You can say where you want to save. I just save on the desktop. Go. OK, now I'm recording. And now you could say I'm going to start MATLAB and also analyze some data while I'm recording. Um, I, um, I um, add uh, a path to my MATLAB, which allows me to view the streams. So um, under 
oops, oh, I accidentally clicked PyCharm, but we we'll ignore that for a moment. In the apps directory, there's this MATLAB viewer, and I just say add path directory lab string layer apps MATLAB viewer, enter, and then I type this stream, which is the stream viewer program. And with that, I can now access and vis visualize any stream that's on the network. Let's try this real quick. So I can pick, say, audio capture. And I should get you know, a two-channel stream or something like that. Here is my audio. Um, you can change the scale. This is me talking here. Uh, it comes from my laptop uh, while it's being recorded as well. Um, obviously, you can also you know, stop the recording and continue visualizing and so on. But uh, anyway. And now I might want to uh, look at the data offline. And if you recorded EEG, you will probably want to use EEG Lab which is our offline EEG analysis toolkit. Um, you can find this on the web as well. Um, I just show this for offline analysis. It's good if you can tinker with your data, you know, and EEG Lab is really neat for that um, to change things uh, in your signal, clean it up, cut out parts. It's like your recording studio, if you will. Um, if you Google for that, you get to this website, and here you can also download this. I just started here in MATLAB because I already have it on somewhere on my disk. And then you get this little graphical user interface. And I can say import data. And I just import from, from XDF. XDF is the format that the recorder that we just used records to. And I pick desktop, untitled.xdf. Now I can see which kind of stream I want to import, and, and it suggests EEG, but I haven't recorded any EEG, so I, uh, I import the audio stream. So I type in audio. That's because the stream has type audio. Now we, we recorded for several seconds with 44 kilohertz. It, I hope it manages to deal with that, but it looks good. And now I can plot the data also and do offline analysis. It looks like the scale is, is pretty far off here. Um, but you get the idea, you know. Here's my audio. There's event markers, mouse buttons. This was me clicking while I was talking. You see, so it's really convenient to work with that. Um, and again, it's, it's most useful for EEG, of course. So this is how fast you can get data from some device into your uh, MATLAB. And I also show you real quick how to do it with a script. So say you, you just came up with a great way to filter an EEG signal or something online. Then you can go on in MATLAB um, and actually use the example programs that, that come with LSL. It turns out that the MATLAB viewer contains example programs for MATLAB as well. Uh, if you say add path, gen path in this directory, it also includes all the subdirectories. And then I can just go on and edit an example script. I know that there's one is called receive data, receive data in chunks. Say, I start this. Um, this is a MATLAB script similar to what I showed you, um, and it tries to read from an EEG stream, and then it pulls the chunks and displays them. Is if I change it into audio, it uh, display my audio here. You see, so. Um, this script is one of the few that actually, <laughs> you see it's very little and it actually works. Um, or I could go on and, and say, show the Wii mode stream. So I say name Wii mode sensors zero. I memoize this and run it. And now I get the Wii mode signal. It turns out the Wii mode sends things at variable rate. It only sends stuff if I actually move this thing. But anyway. Um, so you get the idea. It's very, very easy to, to record from a whole bunch of devices. The time series are also synchronized uh, in software. So it, uh, it's, it's very easy to get started with that. And it's basically the same setup if, if you use BCI lab later. And that basically concludes this little um, demo. I just want to show one more thing, and that is for stimulus presentation, which is a big issue automatically when you want to do experiments. I would suggest to use 
I would probably use PIF, you know, which is this Python-based system. Or you can also use a uh, third-party software like Presentation or ePrime, which are easier to use because they have a GUI. We also have a Python-based in-house tool, which I should show you because it's created by us, which is called Snap. You can find this online as well. Um, uh, so this, this goes from very, very simple stimulus presentation, like here, show a crosshair, show a letter, you know, then pause, crosshair again, to extremely complex things like 3D games with multiple players and so on. I probably have a video somewhere, but I'm, um, you can find these videos online as well. And so this thing is in Python, and obviously you can talk to LSL using the Python interface. And the code is very, very simple. Oh, I'll just do this real quick. Um, um, let me see where I have my snap uh, download, probably here. I just show you the source code for the module that shows these um, A's and U's. It's basically this this much. Okay, it's Python. It's like a loop, show a crosshair, and then based on random choice, show either an A or a U, and then sleep for two seconds. So uh, it, it can be extremely simple to script something like that. And it's these ultra boring experiments that you actually sometimes need to record calibration data, where you say, OK, please imagine speaking a, an A when you see an A, and imagine speaking an E when you see an E. And so you get lots of examples of EEG data, why a person imagines certain kinds of vowels. And that's what you need to learn from how to estimate what kind of wall a person is imagining at any given time. So it frequently boils down to things like that. Of course, you can also do it in a video game-like environment. But so um, that's going to be the, the end of this little um, LSL demo.